In the heart of Moscow, Kremlin-approved propagandists call for nuclear strikes. As the war in Ukraine enters its second year, Russia is ramping up its propaganda. In Putin's world, there can be no dissent. If some person in charge is suspicious about you in Russia, that means you will be arrested. For the past year, Vladimir Putin hasn't just commanded the invasion of Ukraine, he's also led an information war at home and abroad. In June, I was one of several international journalists to be formally sanctioned for critical reporting, meaning I can never go back to Russia. But that's nothing compared to what's happened to independent Russian journalists who were forced to flee their country. Now, most have regrouped here to the Latvian capital, Riga, to try to counter state propaganda that is no longer just extreme, it is verging on insane. Главарь террористов, не приходя в сознание, начинает трансляцию из своего центра принятия решений. Что можно сказать? Мы не с ним. This is how prime-time Russian television portrays Ukraine's president Vladimir Zelensky as a satanic drug addict. Zelensky is so much eating and eating or eating that it is impossible to comment on it. But in Latvia, exiled Russian journalists are fighting propaganda with facts. This is something that we have to do, and we know how to do, and we need to fight this war. Can they win the war of words? In a rented studio in downtown Riga, banned Russian journalists are back at work. This is TV Rain, a private station that was closed in Moscow but has reopened in Latvia. Tonight, presenter Yekaterina Kotrikadze is investigating a missile strike on civilians in Ukraine. Well, we're talking about Dnipro and this uh, terrible attack of Russian forces. Um, there are 45 uh, confirmed deaths uh, only in, in one building, which is uh, devastating. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's quite, it's quite uh, terrible and not easy to talk about. But anyways, we need to. So all the things you don't see on Russian state television. Oh, never, never. <laughs> Everything on Russian state TV is such a terrible hypocrisy. Like they, like they don't remember that Russia has started this invasion. And, and, of course, they don't say anything about dead children and they, maybe they don't care, I don't know. Well. The price for independent reporting is exile. Russia banned TV rain in the first days of the war after Yekaterina Kotrekadze delivered this scathing editorial. То, что с нами сейчас происходит, это катастрофа. Как мы оказались в аду, как вышло, что один человек, размахивающий ядерным оружием, как ключами от дорогой тачки, взялся определять будущее моих детей, наших детей, и определил его. Он решил, что будущее наших детей в России – это нищета, изоляция, статус изгоя, война. She and her husband, Tikhon Syadko, the station's editor-in-chief, fled Russia the next day to avoid arrest. I first met them a month later in the neighbouring state of Georgia, where they were trying to re-establish TV reign. It was clear they were not welcome. We know that Georgian government is not happy with us being here. They are afraid of President Vladimir yeah. Putin bombing Georgia because we are here. 
because he doesn't like that Russian opposition exists. People and journalists, they, well, they, yeah, exist. <laughs> Latvia came to the rescue, offering sanctuary to the journalists who Putin had banned. TV Rain was granted a license to broadcast their programs from Riga. Russia blocked their transmission, but they evade censorship by putting content on YouTube. Russians are among the world's biggest users of YouTube, and the Russian government hasn't yet dared block it. After the relaunch, we are having approximately 22 million unique viewers monthly, and 65% of these 22 million viewers are from Russia. It is very important. Even though we are here in Latvia, we are outside of Russia, the main part of the audience is inside. Latvia was happy to help undermine Russia's propaganda. This small nation of just 1.8 million people is one of Ukraine's most ardent backers and an historic enemy of Russia. Along with its Baltic neighbours, Estonia and Lithuania, Latvia endured nearly half a century of Soviet occupation until winning independence in 1991. Riga's Museum of Occupation not only commemorates Moscow's crimes against Latvia, but also Ukraine, where millions were starved to death under Stalin. Egos Levitz is Latvia's president. Please sit down. We lived for 50 years under occupation, and uh, we don't want uh, this again, and uh, therefore we are uh, on the side of Ukraine. We have allowed in Latvia work of Russian journalists to uh, spread free information and I think it's the uh, interest of, of Europe and uh, we have allowed uh, broadcasting companies to work from here. Latvia sees the Ukraine war as an echo of its own trauma. Every January it commemorates Latvians killed by Soviet troops in independence protests. <laughs> President Levitz was among the first heads of state to visit Ukraine and the first to stay overnight in Kyiv. It is a political support because Latvia is supporting uh, Ukraine from the beginning of the war and also uh, for me as head of uh, the state is also a personal issue too. Because we uh, are taking democracy seriously and therefore we should support a country which is attacked by an autocratic regime, and, uh, which is based on an imperialistic ideology. While Latvia has banned Russian tourists, it fast-tracked the visas for hundreds of Russian journalists. The city is dotted with Russian news programs and investigative websites, along with Russia's last independent newspaper, Novaya Gazeta. Its editor, Kirill Martinov, was the first to arrive. We had like 85 uh, journalists, all of them and their families were at risk. And uh, I decided to, uh, to, to go to Europe to find partners uh, to, to understand if we can continue our work from here and so what we need to do. 
So you arrived here with a suitcase and a laptop to try to restart Novaya uh, Even Even without suitcase, you know, I was so shocked that I, I never prepared suitcase. What unites them all is a passion to bring accurate news to Russians and undercut the monopoly of state propaganda. We try to help people to stay sane inside Russia because a, a lot of people, I mean millions of people, they think maybe I'm crazy. If everyone talks that war is great, maybe something is wrong is with me. Maybe I'm, you know, I'm a crazy person. And we need to provide them, them real stories about the war and its consequences and crisis inside Russia to help them, you know, just to survive in this situation. And after that, we try to rebuild public opinion on Russia. Novaya Gazeta's website is now blocked in Russia, but it sends out its copy on Telegram channels. It's also running a YouTube channel to try to reach more people. So, are you winning the information war, or are you just... No, we are, we are fighting, we are not winning, but we are not losing. Propaganda can't deliver its information and its worldview to any single Russian citizen. And we fight for a huge minority of Russians. I think it's like, like 30 million of people. Most Russians, however, especially older ones, get their news from Russia's three state-run TV channels. Vladimir Solovyev once worked for TV Rain's owners, but is now the Kremlin's leading mouthpiece. His program, Evening with Vladimir Solovyov, runs five nights a week on Russia's top rating channel. His regular co propagandist is Margarita Simonyan, editor in chief of Russia's international network, Russia Today. She supports complete state control of information. As Russia has been pushed back in Ukraine, the rhetoric has become ever more strident. At the start of the war, state media were pushing the line that Ukraine was a Nazi state. The line now, believe it or not, is that it's run by LGBT Nazis trying to make Russia gender neutral. Это реально, это стадия восьмилетнего обострения геноцида украинской бандеровской нацистской власти против российского народа, против русскоговорящих, против тех, кто не принимает ЛГБТ, трансгендер, нацистские ценности. Соловьев claims Ukraine's president is not just a drug addict, he's a gay pedophile. Но посмотрите на Зеленского, даже в своем творчестве он, конечно, постоянно протаскивал абсолютно педерастические ценности. Все его танцы в латексе, вся эта манерная голубизна, все это заигрывание с наркотиками. There was no such talk in 2013. When Solovyov's channel presented a spangle-filled New Year's Eve concert, hosted by a popular young Ukrainian entertainer, Vladimir Zelensky. Among his adoring fans, Vladimir Solovyov himself. Vladimir Zelensky! This idea of LGBT Nazis, yeah, maybe you can enlighten me as to the issue because I'm not quite sure what that even means or how it's possible. <laughs> what, what is it all about and do people believe it? Well, I think that the uh, main problem for the uh, Russian um, government and for the state propaganda, that they have to somehow sell the process of demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. But these two words, they just don't have any, any meaning, any, any sense. Because, yes, there are Nazis in Ukraine, but there are also Nazis in Russian Federation and in the United States and in Germany and... Uh, everywhere. 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 Uh, and um, people are just not buying it. 
And so the Russian propaganda switched to the idea that Russia is the last fortress of uh, traditional values. President of Russian Federation, Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. The key narratives of state propaganda come straight from Putin's mouth. Ко всем гражданам России, разве мы хотим, чтобы у нас здесь, в нашей стране, в России, вместо мамы и папы был родитель номер один, номер два, номер три, совсем с пятью лежит? In speeches and interviews, he's laid out the tropes of transgender Nazis and an existential fight against NATO and Satan. Такое полное отрицание человека, неспровержение веры и традиционных ценностей, подавление свободы приобретает черты религии наоборот, откровенного сатанизма. The lines are reinforced at weekly meetings with media officials in the presidential administration. They discuss uh, what is the message, how to, you know, cover uh, different topics, how to bring bright picture of President Putin, how to explain war, how to explain what happens in Russia, uh, if there are some blacklists, you know. Uh, these people can't be on Russian TV anymore, uh, not to mention these topics, and so on. LGBT today is an instrument of hybrid war. Members of Parliament are now citing cartoons as proof of Western subversion. Here is a school pedophile. That's what Vladimir Putin is saying. There in the West they have uh, all these LGBT activists and they have gays everywhere and your kids would be sick with uh, gayness or, or, or something. And here in Russia we are still the cradle of traditional values. На Западе продолжают втаптывать в грязь рождественские традиции. В Австралии родители все чаще уводят своих детей на шоу трансвеститов для всей семьи, в которых присутствуют откровенные намеки на однополые сексы и пропагандируется трансгендерный переход для самых маленьких. Родители считают, что это нормально, и шоу трансвеститов мало чем отличается от современных диснеевских шоу, которые буквально пропитаны инклюзивной повесточкой. Russia has close to the world's highest rates of divorce, widespread prostitution, and it's officially secular. But that doesn't stop the relentless message that they're fighting to protect religious family values. Russia Today's Margarita Simonyan portrays herself as a beleaguered mother, fearful of NATO troops dictating how she can raise her children. И вот жить в таком мире, где мне нельзя будет э, надевать платье на своих дочерей и объяснять своему сыну, что он мальчик. И я не хочу жить в человечестве, где какие-то государственные органы отнимут у меня такое право, как это происходит во многих странах уже сейчас. Для меня это нестерпимо. Для меня это хуже, чем война. Вот прям хуже, чем война. Путин has rewarded his propagandists handsomely. Vladimir Solovyov owned two villas on Italy's Lake Como before losing them to sanctions. Protesters dyed his swimming pool blood red. Simonyan Margarita Simonovna, главный редактор телеканала Russia Today. Simonyan received an order of honor for her attacks on Ukraine and Ukrainians. Спасибо вам, что вы с болью, с кровью но вырываете из кровавой пасти этих людоедов наших людей, что вы решились на это. А мы будем в этом помогать, мочить людоедов столько, сколько вы от нас этого потребуете. Служу России. Спасибо. State TV's bombastic tone owes much to the US network Fox News, which makes similar attacks on Western liberalism. 
Russian TV not only echoes the network's style, it runs anti-Ukraine commentary from Fox News hosts like Tucker Carlson. And of course they're promoting war. Not to maintain the democracy that is Ukraine. Ukraine is not a democracy. It has never been a democracy in its history, and it's not now. It's a client state of the Biden administration. Russian propaganda may have copied Fox News, but Kirill Martinov believes it has gone much further. I think, you know, the, the question about Russian state TV programs is the question for some scientists like anthropologists and some doctors. Because if you watch it for several hours, well, it hits you. Мы что, не можем наконец нанести удар по Лондону? В чем проблема? Не, 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 только по военным объектам. Ну и по парламенту. Latvia is not just at the front line of the information war. 40 minutes drive from Riga, NATO troops are preparing for battle. This Danish battalion was sent here three months after the invasion to beef up the Alliance's frontline presence. They train in urban warfare, capturing POWs and surviving sub-zero temperatures. Denmark has fought NATO engagements before, but the commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Lunau, says this time the feeling is different. We are used to deploy soldiers to Iraq, Afghanistan. It was a war uh, in the distance, but now there are war and crisis in Europe. And in, in that respect, it's, it's, it's more meaningful, at least to me as a soldier, to be here and uh, protect uh, the democracy and, uh, well, our common values in, in Europe. Latvia joined the Western Defence Alliance in 2004, bringing NATO troops deep inside the former Soviet Union. Now, of course, critics of NATO expansion argue it left Russia no choice but to respond militarily. But here again, the feeling is the opposite. Latvians believe that if they hadn't joined NATO, if they didn't have NATO troops training here, Russia wouldn't just be attacking Ukraine, they would now be threatening Riga. Russia's propagandists are suggesting Latvia and its Baltic neighbours Lithuania and Estonia should be next in line. Почему мы вообще должны признавать их независимость? Распад СССР не был юридически законно оформлен, не была соблюдена процедура. Мы не должны признавать нацистские государства, образовавшиеся на месте осколков. Comments like that reinforce a deep-seated belief in Latvia that Russia will always be an imperialist threat. Many here have also lost trust in ordinary Russians, including the exiled journalists. Any single neighbours of Russia these days is in fear because everyone understands that Putin can attack other countries too. And Latvia has uh, this experience of occupation for many decades. And so it's totally understandable why not every people here in Latvia trust Russian journalists. Some hardline Latvian nationalists believe the country has quite enough Russians already. One in four people in Latvia is Russian-speaking, a legacy of Soviet occupation. Parts of Riga feel like downtown Moscow. Many don't even speak Latvian, so they've been denied citizenship. <laughs> As the months wore on, Tikhon Syadko felt increasingly under scrutiny. Some of the parts of the society here in Latvia were not uh, happy with us being here. Do you think there were people looking for you to make a mistake? Absolutely. Without, a lot of them. Without any doubt, part of the society here 
was waiting for the mistake to happen, and it did happen. In December, a presenter in Georgia was discussing the appalling conditions for mobilized Russian troops and ad-libbed what sounded like an offer to send them aid. He said something about support of Russian soldiers on the front, which is absolutely unacceptable. TV Rain does not support Russian soldiers on the front. TV Rain does not support Army of Russian Federation. The presenter was fired, his comments were taken offline. It didn't matter. Five days later, Latvia cancelled their broadcast licence. They wanted to help Russian soldiers to kill Ukrainians, and we cannot uh, uh, tolerate such views in our country because we are a democratic country. They revoked our licence and they uh, called us the uh, threat to the national security of Latvian Republic, which in our point of view is um, absolutely unacceptable accusations because we are absolutely not a threat to the national security of Latvia. Latvia's journalist union condemned the decision, but the government refused to budge. Russian state television, of course, was gloating. TV Rain is continuing to send content on YouTube but can no longer broadcast to Russians inside Latvia. Over the coming months it plans to relocate again. The Dutch government has stepped in and granted a broadcast licence. We hope that we will um, still be able to keep part of our team here, but the main part of our team uh, soon will uh, move to Amsterdam, to the Netherlands. You can upset this whole scandal and, and collapse of, uh, of this situation. We were one night looking at each other and saying, oh my God, I'm so tired. Yeah. I, was, I just can't do it anymore. Just, I don't have any resources. At, you know, I have two kids. I mean, I'm tired and Disha has four kids. So, I mean, it's enough. But next day, early morning, we woke up and we went to work because there's nothing, nothing else um, we can do. As the war enters its second year, Russian journalists on both sides are settling in for a long fight. The propagandist Solovyov has taken to visiting the front lines. Here, he's exhorting troops from Russia's Muslim regions to fight harder against the godless West. Против нас 50 стран, которых объединяет одно – сатанизм. Solovyov, who is Jewish, tells them it's a holy jihad. Yeah, it's crazy, but you know, if you try to support totally unprovoked criminal war for a year, you find yourself in this hole, you know, you're just like in Alice in the Wonderland. You are just, you know, fallen. And they don't understand basically what happens. I think that propaganda is not control itself. They need to, you know, raise stakes and they are, well, out of any reasonable, like, human beings anymore. At TV Rain, they continue the daily slog of showing uncomfortable facts and critical interviews and hoping people back home are watching. I think that this year will be terrible, the second year of the war, because Russia will try to make a counter-offensive. We will see rivers of blood and tens of thousands of people would be killed and um, Russia will lose because Ukrainians are fighting on their own lands and Ukrainians are fighting with the help of the Western countries. When will you go home? A Cu <laughs> couple of years. It was the right question. Very good question. I think it's the best question, <laughs> but we don't have an answer.
Наша главная задача – обеспечить сохранение России. В данном случае военная деятельность не просто героическая работа, но она и трудная очень. Тяжелая, тяжелая, тяжелая. Всегда нужно было оказывать соответствующее противодействие этой попытке дезориентировать наших людей, наших граждан. Самое главное – это правда, достоверность. Это наше самое главное оружие.